but the reality is I'll decide what I'm asking. I've asked it in excess of 90 times. Next show, I'll point out that I've asked it in excess of 100 times for a scientific proof of Earth curvature to be provided to me. And you 2,000 judge it years, we should have one. Nathan, I should be able to go through it at my leisure. I don't need to justify my understanding Nathan, of anything. You've asked, him, you've asked him 90 times, remember, which is nearly double figures. Nearly double figures. Do you know what double means, Lottie? Are you mathematically retarded? Double means two. So it's not nearly double figures. It is double figures, oh, Lottie. Man. You retard. No, you said nearly double figures, Nathan. It's already double figures. You said this yeah, a couple of shows ago. Double is two. Ago, We're nearly into perfect. triple figures, Lottie. Clearly you're retarded. So, yes, don't poison the chat with your retarded nonsense. We're nearly into triple figures. We are in double figures. 90s double, two. That's what double means. Anyway... Let's not get distracted with how many times the question's been asked based on double or triple digits. Let's focus on the fact that after being asked in excess of 90 times, Rumpus has failed to just provide any, any scientific proof of Earth curvature. And as Alan has pointed out nicely, there is no scientific proof of Earth curvature. It's an argument I can't you, lose, Lottie. You, you seem to think right, censoring. Next. You think the only way you can defend your position is censoring people. Not censoring people. Are you so scared of being in, having a debate that you're the only way you can engage with people is to censor debate? Very I'm strange debate anything. channel in which you censor debate. I'm not censoring anything. I'm asking you for scientific proof of Earth curvature. I keep asking for it, but I just never get and it. And I keep on, and you don't allow me to answer. No, you do answer. You tell me that the don't you don't need a null hypothesis. So you're not actually giving me a scientific proof of Earth curvature. You're telling me what I don't need. You, you yes, but you 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 yeah. Now you're stuttering. So rather than telling me what I do and don't need, you provide me with a scientific proof of Earth curvature, and I'll study it at my leisure. Simple. Moving. I'll, I'll just turn Nathan down here. Oh, no, turn me down and I'll kick you out. I've already said that, Rumpus. What, what are you well, talking Nathan, about? If you persist, if you persist on interrupting, I'll just turn you down and I'll speak to Lottie. Yeah, Nathan, this is a debate. You're supposed to moderate, not just interrupt everyone. Just keep quiet, please. Sorry, you're telling the host of the show that you want to talk amongst yourselves and you're going to turn him down because he's asked in, in excess of 90 times for a scientific proof of something that you haven't provided. And you're telling me that I'm an unreasonable moderator. No, I'm afraid not, Lottie. No, 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 no. Where's your scientific proof of Earth curve? We just want other people to have a conversation, Nathan, without you interrupting consistently. Yeah, I'm going to consistently annoying. interrupt. I mean, interrupting rumpus. every so often is fine. If you've got to think there's a gross error, I think interrupting is absolutely perfectly reasonable. But to completely interrupt people when they're just starting a sentence every single time they try and answer you, that's not a debate. That's you. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with me asking continually for something that you haven't provided, Rumpus? If you want to continue to obfuscate and tell me what I do and don't need from the scientific method, rather than just providing a scientific proof of Earth curvature, then what do you want? I'm just going to keep asking you over and over again. Yeah, but you don't listen to the answer. You don't. I've listened to the answer, and your answer is that I don't understand the scientific method. Your answer is to tell me to explain it to you. Your answer is to tell me that you don't need a null hypothesis. Ruhif's answer is to tell me that my understanding is too narrow. That's what your answer is. The question is simple. Why isn't it that you can't just simply provide a scientific proof of Earth curvature? Why is it that you want to continually obfuscate? Tell me what I don't understand. Tell me what I will and won't accept. Why is that? Can we have this on a loop? Oh, we've, got to have, we've, got to have, we've got to put this on a loop and then we can talk amongst ourselves while he's doing that, perhaps. Right. The, what, the, what do you mean you talk amongst you, yourselves? You cannot be the judge. What you, yes, I can be the judge. Oh, yeah. I will be the judge. What are you talking yes, about? Yes, that's... Right, that's fine, Nathan. Yeah, it is fine. I'll be the judge of the scientific proof of Earth curvature that you Lottie, provide me with. You know, the reason the space station, the, the people disappear, is that they're moving. When you have digital compression of things, when you start losing the transmission, you lose the things that are moving. Because No, you don't get to talk about these subjects, Rumpus. Your only purpose, while you're on the panel, is to provide scientific proof of Earth curvature. That's what you're here no, for. No, you're not, not here to talk that. about the anomalies and the fun stuff that we talk I, about. I've just explained to people who might be interested as to why that video you should put up. Already. No, I'm not interested in your explanation for a NASA anomaly. I am only interested in your scientific proof of Earth curvature. Well, you might be, but I'm not interested in answering any of those sorts of questions. I will if you're try, not interested answer. in I'm answering that question, that, right, you've got me. two choices. You're on the fine line here, Rumpus. You can obfuscate oh, oh, it only so oh, no, long, I'm, right? Lottie, I'm on the fine line. Can you yeah, you are, you are. Like Neg. Like Neg. Oh, no, people, people, I'm on the fine line. Yeah, you are on a fine line, like Neg. 
If he just says, eh, I don't want to answer that question, then you can basically sod off. You've got no point, you've got no place in being here. If you simply don't give an answer and say, I'm not going to give an answer for that, I'd rather talk about NASA anomalies than actually provide a scientific proof of Earth curvature, then you've got no place in being here. You know, you've obfuscated for nearly a hundred times of being asked the same question, and now you're saying, oh, I'd rather talk amongst myself with Lottie about a NASA anomaly than actually address the fact that you haven't provided a scientific proof of Earth curvature. Finest line I've ever, oh, ever God. witnessed. <laughs> I think you've crossed Yo, that's the a, line. That's a, that's a thick line. Nice pun, Alan B. Close encounter with a line there. Rumpus. You say that oh, only the rip. moving things move. Sorry? You, say the only move, you said that only the moving things are moving and I getting did glitched that, yes. out. Yeah, okay. So I want you to pay attention to this area here. Okay. And nothing is actually moving at all. It's Nothing's moving at all. But you watch how this glitches out as well. Right, which pity you... Which oh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. What's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on there? What's that? What's Isn't this? Isn't that simply compression? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. You said, said only the issue, moving yeah. things. You said only the moving <laughs> This yes, but it is. Can't you, but, yes, but can you not see that there what? is a, a noise? It's a noisy picture, and so that is that. Could you not see that it was speckled, and that's due to noise in the image, and therefore that constitutes moving? No, 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 no. Okay. Can you not look, look at it before. You will see that area around there was noisy. Serious? What's more, that <laughs> also has a reflection of the. <laughs> <laughs> So anything that has a reflection and moves. Well, anything that's moving, any movement means requires extra compression. Rumpus, I can't believe you believe half the nonsense that comes out of your mouth. Oh, I believe everything. <laughs> well, uh, reality is reality is complicated. Whoever said that, and that you're and that, you're really saying that this is reality. You absolutely. look at this and you say this is reality. <laughs> You're, oh my Come God! On. Come on. We Ron. have independent evidence. We have many, many independent lines of evidence, and it conforms to the laws of physics. I mean, you can see in the images here just their faces and things. The compression on here causes random effects. For instance, it only requires one pixel. Well, the only on the compression on side. him is the. Pants so that why is that not happening to the rest of the background? I explain I to you. I explained to you, it's things that are moving require compression. Okay, okay so what's moving. going on in the are, cabin are and the right? Are you familiar with the idea of keyframes and things in video compression? Uh, all that stuff on the right is not moving. Well, it only has to be They changed. cannot stop the video. Have you ever right? seen this on terrestrial TV when they're watching the Olympics or anything like that, any kind of the world sports, racing on television, have you ever, Grand Prix, have you ever seen this glitch out on that. Oh no, no, obviously not. So but why that's does because... it glitch out in uh, on this then? Because this I is not it's... probably because it's travelling from space. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's travelling oh, yeah. from space. Yeah. Island. Seventeen thousand. That's probably the answer. Oh, this is someone oh, using right. their someone using the equipment, your desktop stuff, and then transmitting <laughs> it. This is not an, an official broadcast using broad. This is not a broadcast company doing this. This is someone is using rumpus, a rumpus. simple is video it, camera and then having to compress it, it using. Yes, but is they're, it because they're, they're, not they're not moving at seventeen thousand miles an hour. Production company. They don't have the equipment that they would. That <laughs> no, they don't have the Grand equipment, Prix. do they? You're right. You're right. They don't have the equipment. Not to do video stuff. They haven't got. They haven't got a big television yeah, camera what? with all the hardware. Remember, no, no, every no. Kilo, every kilogram <laughs> to get into space requires in. Well, I can't remember how much, how many kilograms of fuel you need to get a kilogram right, of space, but it's a large that's amount. The case, then. Why don't they put him on a diet then? Look at the size of him. If he's, <laughs> well, that, seriously, I, I, why well, have you I, sent him up that I, size? I get him on a diet, right? If it costs all this money to send every kilo up, right? Look how many kilos he's got there. Yeah, but then they're right? probably accused of discrimination of being fattest or something if they did that. Get it out of it. It's NASA. They will be accused of discrimination if they do really? so F1 drivers who require extreme. Hold on, Rumpus. Rumpus, Rumpus you're talking world, over constantly. Felt... Rumpus, so when they have F1 drivers that have to be in the peak of physical condition in order to drive an F1 car, would you say that we, they're, being, we, they're being prejudiced against are we fat, fat people? Shaming astronauts now? No, no, I'm saying that you would <laughs> no. require to be light because of the limitations of space. That's right, Ranty's but... point. I'll give you an answer, Nathan, if I can. Uh, oh. These people are here because of their brain power. The people in the Grand Prix car are there because they can do the best at driving. This guy might be the best at doing whatever he does in a car that's being fast. If he, if this guy was no good at his job of being a whatever it is he's doing here, 
unless he's on some sort of teacher sort of you know some sort of that nasa propaganda thing to get no you know uh, uh, why have they got, got why have they brought watches up <clears throat> I have no idea. No, all these extra weights, all this extra weight that they're bringing up, it all adds up. He's Absolutely. got a belt on here, you know. Yeah, I mean, I why think... Don't they, why don't they put them in suits? Why don't, don't weigh anything? I, I mean, come on, you, discussing you cannot watch this and think it's real. It is Such absolutely 100% real. This is the most oh biggest load of nonsense. Yeah. Ranty, got layers that Ranty, are dissolving into each other. Ranty, now you can you claim can it's real and ISS. it's just a camera glitch because it's a handheld Ranty, you camera beyond me. You can see the ISS from, from your... You could see it if you wish to. You can see something. Rumpus. So, yeah, Rumpus, it's, it's, you, you believe that these guys right now are moving at 17,000 miles an hour absolutely. on the ISS? I mean, have you been oh, in the train? Uh, I mean, you've been in an aeroplane, I presume, that travels at 500 miles an hour. Did you feel any great stress doing that? Yeah. It doesn't come from the team. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but did you feel as though you're being thrown around at 500 miles an hour? No. Yes, of course, yes, you... I did. Yeah, that... Yes, absolutely, unequivocally, in a plane, you feel forces. Mm, thousands, yes. right. But do you understand the principle of Galileo's theory of relativity that you could be on a in a in a, in a train. Sorry, did you just you, ignore what I just said, Rumpus? Yes, I I've been on a plane, said, and yes, talking. I could feel forces acting on me. Did you just completely ignore that? I didn't hear that. Okay, right, I'll so say it again, question. no problem. So I've been on a plane, and you can unequivocally feel forces on you the entire time you're on the plane. Right, that's due Definitely. to the change in your change in velocity. You're not maintaining a perfect 500 miles an hour because of winds and things. Oh, so it's a crap example then. Were, so it's a rubbish you, example. On, so why did you bring it up? Then, why did you bring it up then? You. Why did you bring it up? What's the last question? Why did you bring it up then? Because in space you don't have winds and things and you can go along perfectly. With it. Well, actually, they're going through a tiny bit of the atmosphere, so they are affected very, very slightly by the atmosphere but basically they're Sorry, going through a no that wasn't my question gonna... my question was oh, no, why did you bring up an aeroplane you're now telling us what happens in space but you tried to use something as an analogy you used a plane i'm I've asking why 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 did you use a plane as an analogy i've got 10 more seconds to go in my explanation in space you can go along in perfect straight lines and you're not affected by winds and things, so you do not feel the forces that you felt on an aeroplane. Who's you? Yeah. I don't feel the forces in space. I've never been to space. That's why I'm asking you about something that was analogous, which was a plane, which I have been on. Right, but you accept that the, you're not feeling the forces of 500 miles an hour. You're feeling the effect... No, are you deaf? Are you stupid? I've just said it twice. Yes, I felt forces the entire journey while I was on a plane. When I asked you why you brought that up as an example, you went on to explain that you don't feel any forces in space because of constant motion. I've okay, not been to explain. space, Rumpus. Okay, Have you been to space, dickhead? Okay, let me explain more. Have you been to space, man? Have you? Yes. You've right. been to space. So, on an aeroplane... Hold on. You're, You've been to space, Rumpus. Your point is that... Hold on. You no, 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 no. You just answered forces. yes to my question. But do, Have you been to space? You that the force... Why do you keep talking? I'm asking you a very direct question. Have you been to space? Because you've just answered yes. I did. Okay. When did you go to space? Uh, last week. You went to space last week? Last week, yes. Tell me all about it. Then you be Mason then. Hold on, let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was in space last week. Yeah, I, I had quick... I had quick... <laughs> Bilu, I had a chat with Bilu online. Sorry? Are you said, lying? Yes, I am, actually. You, you are lying. You, you have not letter. been to you space. You saw through me. Oh, dear. You okay. saw through it, didn't you? Damn. So you were lying. Uh, well, you haven't been to space. So my point, that when you used a plane, that's something that we can all experience, and it doesn't in any way compare to what you're now just going to assert you can feel in space, and I, you I haven't been there, that really pisses me off, you lying little toad. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Rumpus. I asked you a direct question in terms of your comparison to an aeroplane and obliterated your assertion that you don't feel any forces on it. Then I asked you about who has been to space and you claimed you had. Now you've just admitted that you're a lying little toad and that you haven't been to space and then tried to make light of it with Bilu the alien. Now, while it's fun to make fun of these idiots who believe in Bilu or these idiots that believe in Starman... None of I'm us have been to space, to including you, you lying toad. 
I'm trying to answer your question. Yeah, you think it's funny? I just find I you a disingenuous you liar. Stupid. I mean, you you're are. So stupid. I mean, you're we'll stupid. cut out that section and we will play it at nausea. Rumpus is a I'm liar. I'm trying to answer your you question. You are a liar. You claimed <laughs> you had been to space. You are a liar. <laughs> yeah, you think it's funny, man. Yeah, I'm going to hold your toast to the fire with this as well, you lying toad. Rumpus is unequivocally a liar. He lied on this show about going to space. The point being that we can't go to space. We can't validate any of this stuff we're anomaly hunting with. We can't double check it for ourselves. That's why I highlighted his analogy with an aeroplane. And I'm trying to answer your question. No, you didn't. You lied. You lied and said that you'd been to space because you're a liar. That's what you did, Rumpus. You lied to me. You lied to the panel and you lied to the <laughs> audience. <laughs> now you're laughing about your lie. You disingenuous lying toad. You've got no scientific you're proof like... of earth curvature. And all you can do when you draw analogies, when you're anomaly hunting, all you can do is lie. He wasn't a lie, Nathan. You're... He did lie. I asked him a direct question about space and whether or not he'd been there. His answer was yes. I then forced the issue and asked him again if he'd been to space. And he answered for a second time. Yes, I have been to space. Rumpus is so a liar. Dysfunctional. 